two astronauts, as shown in the figure below, each having a mass of 75 kilograms, are connected by a 10 meter rope of negligible mass. It means we don't have to take the uh, we don't have to worry about moment of inertia of the mass. They're isolated in space, orbiting their center of mass at a speed of 4.75 meters per second. Okay. Between the astronauts as particles, calculate the magnitude of the angular momentum of the astronauts in the system. So for this, I'm going to say, this will be part A. I'm going to say momentum is mass times velocity. The angular equivalent is moment of inertia times angular speed. These are particles, mr squared, and that's just the moment of inertia for a particle, not to Say the astronauts are merely particles, or just treating them as such. I don't know if that makes it better or not. I don't know. So omega is V over R. Therefore, we can kind of sort of say that this is mR squared times V over R, which is the same as R mass times velocity. Yes. And so we're going to do the total mass. Well, uh, the total uh, angular momentum will be angular momentum. We'll call this astronaut one. Call this astronaut two. Be L one plus L two, which is just going to be R M V times two, which is going to be two times R D for diameter. I don't know if D for diameter or distance, but we're going to call that. It's going to be five. Two times five times their mass which is 75 times their velocity, maybe their speed, 4.75 meters per second. Um, yep, 4.75. And it's going to be a speed, not velocity, because the direction is changing. A velocity would imply a constant angle. 4.75. Okay, now we go to a calculator. Calculate. I prefer a Wolfram. 2 times 5 times 75 times 4.75. This gives us an answer of bump -a bump 3562.5. That's going to be kilograms meters per second. I think it's kilograms meters per second. Meter squared per second. Kilograms meter squared per second. So the first answer is 3562.5. Now for part B, B, we want to calculate the rotational energy of this system. So I'm just going to, I'm going to think of this more as just calculating the energy of the system, kinetic energy. Um, and I'm going to say it is one half mv squared, and the rotational equivalent of that is one half i omega squared. I think of pretty much everything in terms of linear. And then just do the rotational analogy. Um, if I was a better person, I'd probably be as comfortable in both, but I'm not. And so I is going to be I, this will be I total, be I1 plus I2, because we're just going to add the moments of inertia of both astronauts. Uh, just like mass, if you have two blocks of mass, their total mass is both of them together. So it's going to be mr squared plus mr squared, the only mass we have here are the astronauts, so I'm not going to really specify 1 and 2. So this becomes 2mr squared, yeah, I'll just leave it at that, 2mr squared, omega equals v over r. So we use the relationship velocity equal, it, it's actually vector velocity equals r cross omega. Um, since the velocity is circular motion, so it's going to be tangent to the circle that they're making, right angle cross product is just going to be RW, which is why I'm just kind of jumping to V equals RW there. That, there. There's some jumps there. There's some nuance that's implied, though not stated. But we go V equals RW, which implies that omega, what I call W, is angular speed, which is going to be velocity or speed divided by radius. And so then we take that, and that's going to be, I'll just call it V or R. So energy, um, yes. And I'm going to say that omega squared 
equals V squared over R squared. So energy kinetic, oh, I'm just gonna get, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna get back to our original kinetic energy equation here. 2m r squared v squared over r squared cancel cancel and we are left cancel with the mass of the astronaut which is 75 times their velocity squared which is 4.75 squared and then the one half dropped away because we have two astronauts so energy kinetic and it's not coincidence that we basically got back to the linear equation. Um, the idea is they're, they're related and you don't have to, um, there's a relationship between the two. It is not coincidental. 75 times 4.75 squared. Yes. So I get 1692. 1692, and that's going to be by pulling on the rope that one astronaut is distance between them to five meters what is the new angular momentum of the system okay so one nuance here that you might kind of get caught up in is it's like well it's one astronaut doing the pulling therefore it's not going to be symmetrical and it's going to kind of go cattywampus and it's going to spin not in a symmetrical motion that is a nuance we're not going to worry about and I don't think that it applies to the situation. I think it's totally fine. That's just one um, astronaut pulling on the rope. So you could get caught up in that rabbit hole. Don't. It doesn't apply. And we're not just, nope, don't overthink that. So what it's basically saying is um, that we have an initial angular momentum. We have a final angular momentum, and they are the same. And that's where this is going for here. And we want to find out the new <clears throat> angular momentum of the system. So that's going to be exactly the same. Angular momentum is not going to change here um, by the astronaut pulling on the rope. So the answer to part C is going to be the same answer as part A, which is going to be Three five six two point five. What are the astronauts' new speeds? Now this is going to change. So we have angular momentum, and another way of defining angular momentum is I omega, which, as we discussed earlier, is going to be the same as R M V. R M V. So to find the new speeds v question mark we already know the initial angular momentum and we know all the other data and so this is going to be is there an easy way to do this actually yes i'm going to write out the initial angular momentum as r initial m v initial r final v final so same thing, I'm just hoping things will cancel out and I'm not using the initial 35625 as our data point. So then solving this, we get R naught M V naught over R final M equals V final. M is the mass of the astronauts and actually it's mass of both astronauts together, but it doesn't matter because that cancels. We have an R initial of five meters, because that's the radius. There's a distance separated by 10. Half of that, the radius is five. Our final is gonna be 2.5. And their initial speed was 4.75. So then we do 4.75 effectively multiplied by two. And that gives us two, 9.5 meters per second. So just now, now that they're twice as close, they're going to be moving twice as fast, which is just convenient that this was 5 meters and that was 10. Otherwise, we'd have to do a little bit more math with that ratio, but since it was pretty straightforward, uh, we just doubled it. I could do it in my head. What is the rotational energy 
of the system. All right, so your first thought would be, well, conservation of energy, uh, momentum is conserved, energy is concerned, not the case. And that's because it takes a certain amount of energy for the, um, to, for the astronaut to move himself inward. And that energy is going to basically need to be taken into account. So we found the initial kinetic energy. Now we're going to find energy kinetic final. And we're going to do the same thing here as 1 half mv squared, where the um, mass is going to be 2 times mass, because that's there's two astronauts, uh, v squared, 9.5 squared. So it's the same equation we used over here. We're just now using it with our new updated data. The 2s cancel. The mass of the astronaut, I think it was 75, 75. So it's going to be 75 times 9.5 squared. And so putting that into a calculator, we get 75 times 9.5 squared. And that gives us bump, 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 6769 six, joules which it seems like a lot, and I guess it is. What is the rotational energy of the system? 6769, but they wanted kilojoules, so I'll put a little dot right there, just to, uh, so we have 6,000, because it's 10 to the third, that's kilo. Similar with this one, up here should be 1.692 kilojoules. How much chemical potential energy in the body of the astronaut was converted to mechanical energy in the system when he shortened the rope? Okay, so this is what I was talking about with we have to take into account that the uh, work equals force times distance, integral f dot dx. And there's a force basically pushing them this direction. And dx is in that direction, force dx. There's work energy going in the uh, direction towards the center of mass. That's what we're trying to find here. And so what we're going to do is the difference between the initial energy and the final energy is the energy required to push them together. So this is just going to be 6769 minus 1692. And that gives us a value of, so it's basically E minus B, 6769 minus 1692. That's supposed to be a two up there. My handwriting is tragically bad. And the answer is 507, so 5.077 kilojoules. So that's how I would approach that one. So back up, recap, look what we did here. So the idea for this one was um, two astronauts are spinning in a circle and no matter what they do, we're going to have conservation of momentum because there's no forces out acting on this outside of the astronaut system. And so conservation of momentum. And the energy of the system, we basically find it either using uh, the rotational um, form of kinetic energy, one half i omega squared, or we can use one half i m v squared because they're just two point. There's two point particles. Mass, um, the mass of each of them is like 75. You can know the velocity of each of them. Plug it in, you get an answer. Either way, it totally works. Um, we then use conservation of momentum, and we use conservation of momentum to find the new speed when they moved closer together. Two closer together based on internal forces, the astronaut pulling on the rope. We then found the new rotational energy, and we found the difference between the two. So heavy on concepts. The math wasn't too bad. It's fairly reasonable. So hope that helped. See you in the next problem.